Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another one of my bread videos. In this recipe, I'll be demonstrating how I make this simple but absolutely delicious garlic and basil focaccia bread. Once again, as with many of my bread recipes, I'll be using the no knead method. Instead of forcing the gluten strands to form by kneading the dough for 10 minutes, I firmly believe that by allowing the yeast to naturally form the gluten strands in the first 45 minutes greatly improves the taste and texture of the finished bread. And here's a couple of lists of ingredients you'll need to follow along. First the actual bread and second the ingredients for the garlic and basil topping. OK, I'll start the recipe by adding the 600 grams, that's 21 ounces of strong white bread flour to the bowl. Next, add 1 teaspoon of ordinary table salt. If you're using kosher salt like me, it's 1.5 teaspoons and mix that in. And the best thing to mix it in with is a whisk. Next ingredient is the 7 grams or 2 teaspoons of instant or active dried yeast. If you're using fresh yeast, you'll need 20 grams or 3 quarters of an ounce and mix that in too. OK, like the caption says, this is a 60% hydration dough. That simply means the water is 60% of however much flour you're using in the recipe. Right, I'll add the 360 grams, that's 12.5 ounces of water to the flour. I'm using bottled water at room temperature by the way. Try not to use tap water if possible. The chlorine in tap water is great for helping get rid of harmful bacteria, but it'll also weaken the yeast, which is okay in some recipes, but not this one. And as always, I'll be mixing the contents using the handle of my wooden spoon. And of course, you can use a stand mixer at this stage, but only until the dough comes together. Remember, it's a no need recipe. But I'm doing mine by hand, as it only takes a couple of minutes in real time. Right, I'll give it a couple of folds by hand until it's completely together. Now I'll get it covered with my trusty shower cap and set the timer for 45 minutes. Now the ambient temperature in my kitchen is around 23 Celsius, that's 73 Fahrenheit, and the door will have doubled in size over that time. If your kitchen's colder than that, it may take a little longer than 45 minutes. And after that 45 minutes, mine is ready. As you can see, mine has doubled in size. Now I'll slightly wet the bench and turn out the door. Now with wet hands, I'll just give it a few folds for about 30 seconds and then I'll get it back into the bowl for the last time cover and set the timer for 30 minutes on this occasion. If your first rise took longer than 45 minutes then this rise may also take a little longer too. If your dough isn't rising at all or it's very slow you may want to check that your yeast is working. I tested mine before starting the recipe. I have a yeast test you can try out on my sandwich bread video. I'll leave a link in the description box below. While waiting for the dough to rise, I can get a couple of things ready. Starting with oiling the baking pan with a generous one and a half tablespoons of a good quality extra virgin olive oil. This will make the base crispy and add a nice flavour during the cooking process. Right, I'll begin making the topping for the focaccia. First ingredient is 15 grams of fresh basil leaves. The next ingredient is 50 grams, that's three and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Next are three to four cloves of garlic, about the same as the basil leaves, 15 grams, and finally half a teaspoon of salt. Now I need to turn these ingredients into a sort of paste. There's a couple of ways of doing it. You can use a pestle and mortar by adding all the ingredients and grinding everything into a paste, but for quickness, I'm going to use my mini processor. 
I'm not being sponsored by this maker, but it is a really handy tool to have around the kitchen, especially for these little jobs. I simply add all the ingredients and give it a blitz for a few seconds. But like I said earlier, you can use a pestle and mortar, that takes about 5 minutes to grind down, or you can even use a knife with a chopping board and chop the basil and garlic very finely and then mix in the salt and the oil. I've done that on many occasions too. Out of the three ways that I've suggested, I would say the pestle and mortar is the more authentic. But my little mini processor is the quickest. Whichever way you get there, put it into a bowl and put it aside until you need it. Okay, the time's up on the second rise, so I'll flour the worktop and turn out the dough, which has now risen quite a bit, and it's now ready to shape. Once it's on the bench, sprinkle a little flour over it and pre-shape the dough into a rectangle as shown. Now with a rolling pin, roll it into approximately the same size and shape as your baking pan. Try to do this quickly before the dough starts to tighten up and turn a little elastic. If this happens to your dough, just let it rest for a couple of minutes until it relaxes again. Once it's the right size and shape, get it into the oiled baking pan and spread and stretch it out until it completely covers the bottom of the tin. OK, now get your bowl of basil and garlic mixture and spoon it out across the whole surface of the dough. Once the mixture's been spread out, get your fingers into it and start prodding the dough backwards and forwards like I'm doing in the video. This will help evenly spread the mixture, and when you're finished it should have a dimple pattern covering the whole surface. Getting your fingers stuck into the dough like this is quite enjoyable really. Now cover just the surface of the door with cling film or plastic wrap. This isn't to stop the door from drying out, the oil will do that. The cover is just to stop any dust or foreign bodies falling on it as it rises. A lot of recipes out there say cover the door with a damp tea towel. But in my experience, as the door rises and touches the material, it starts to soak up the oil from the door. So, just listen to Uncle John and use cling film or plastic wrap. Right, find a warm draft free spot and set your timer for at least 45 minutes. Like I said earlier, my kitchen is around 23 degrees Celsius, that's 74 Fahrenheit, so 45 minutes should be long enough for mine. You may have to amend this time to whatever suits the conditions you have. After 35 minutes, this is how my door looks. So when there's only 10 minutes left on your rise, Preheat the oven to 220 degrees Celsius, that's 428 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 7. I'm setting mine to 200 Celsius, allowing for the fan assist. Okay, once your dough looks like this, it's time to get it baked. So carefully and slowly remove the cling film and get it into the preheated oven. Try to be as gentle as possible. Once it's in the oven, set the timer for 20 minutes. 
Now I'll be turning mine after about 12 minutes for even cooking. Right, it's been in the oven for 12 minutes now. And as you can see, mine's starting to go brown a little on one side, indicating that side of the oven is hotter than the other. This is why I always turn my bread halfway through for even cooking. And there it is, one focaccia bread beautifully done. Now to stop the bottom of the bread going soft, you have to get it straight out of the baking pan. But as it's just come out of the oven, it's on the delicate side and it can be a little awkward to get out. So just emulate how I do it using a couple of wire racks. Just be careful not to put the tin directly onto the bench as it's very hot. As soon as this beautiful focaccia is safely out of the baking pan and on the wire rack, I'll give it a drizzle of that fantastic extra virgin olive oil while it's still hot. I'll let that soak in for a couple of minutes and then I'll show you how it looks on the inside. And then have a bit of a taste test. The first thing to notice is how crispy it is. I'll cut a couple of slices off so you can see how the texture of the bread is on the inside. It cuts beautifully and the smell is pure heaven. As you can see it has a great close crumb and soft texture. All the boxes ticked so far. And as if this bread isn't nice enough I'm going to make it even better by grating some of my homemade parmesan cheese over it. And if you want to see how I make this Parmesan cheese, I'll leave links in the description box below on making the cheese and opening it a year later. It's not as difficult as you think. Now for a taste. And I just know I'm going to enjoy this. And as predicted, it's absolutely gorgeous. We'll be having this within the next hour with a nice bowl of homemade creamy spaghetti carbonara. If you do try this bread, Time it so you have it with your meal as soon as it comes out of the oven. And yep, it certainly gets the thumbs up. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.